Buenos dias, Gunners Collective. Back at it, you already know. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Uh. Here's another one. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. She said, what? Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. He's a bicep with some bad habits. Fire, 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 You already know what it is, man. Welcome back to Gunners Collective, where we really get it in. Before we get into it, in a menudo style, a direct fashion, hit that like, subscribe, turn your notifications on all, so you're abreasted of all the dope content I'm bringing this week, because I'm bringing a whole lot of content, a whole lot of mo. He said he got a whole lot of mo? Clubber Lang shit. A whole lot of mo, man. You know what I mean? Hey, woman. Hey, woman. <laughs> you already know what it is, man. We're about to get into it. Guard, shut up. We're working here. Now, in a minute of the style and that directness of fashions, you already seen that thumbnail. So you're saying to yourself, what does the sword mean to the gun? What does it mean to me? What does it taught me? Um, it taught me a whole lot. See, traditionally being a Norteño from Northern California, I was laced a certain way, educated a certain way, instilled with certain ways of thinking. And I grasped that. I ran with it, man. It was what it was. You know, it was the righteous way of thinking being from where I was from. But as a youngster, you know, I was placed in the youth authority, you know, because of what I did. No one else did it to me, homie. I did that. So I, I went ahead and did that. You know, I, I knew what I was doing and I hold full responsibility for my actions. Um, that's what a man does, you know, but I was a boy at that time. Anyways, they sat my ass down in Fred C. Nellis in the youth authority. And that was my first interaction Righteous, real interaction with real sureños from the South, man, from Southern California, the Southern United Raza. And I seen it everywhere I went, man. The taggings on the walls and the oil and the caja, you know, vatos all taqueated down. I remember there was a vato named Lazy from Avenues. That vato had a big ass sur on his arm. So my eye got busted every single day of the week. He made sure we knew exactly what the sur encompassed, right? But I really didn't know what it was about. You know, I knew it was the opposite side of the coin. I knew being up north or from up north as a Norteño, we claimed Norte, you know, Northern Organized Raza to Eternity. That's what we were about, man. We were organized. We were Raza. We were together and it was to eternity, eh? Nothing could stop it, right? Forever forward. Can't stop it. It won't stop because it don't stop. But at the same time, they weren't stopping either, eh? They were representing and they were representing well. So what it taught me is that we were all the same. That although we claimed two different entities, although we claimed two different groups, um, and we were, you know, supportive or loyal to certain organizations at the same time, we definitely, definitely were a lot alike. Okay, now I'm not gonna lie, man, down South Southern California, LA, San Diego, the Inland Empire, man, they move a little bit differently, right? Whereas we're a little bit more swaggy P, they're a little bit more gangster G. That's just it. But as far as what we ate, a lot of the things we encompassed, the way we acted, the militant lifestyles that we lived, you know, the canalismo, the togetherness, the love for the raza, it was all the same, homes. You know, and it taught me a lot about myself and it taught me a lot about what they were doing down south. You know, I got to sit down and break bread and listen to a lot of the stories, a lot of barrio stories, things that I wasn't used to. Because let me tell you, up north, man, there wasn't too much barrio warfare, at least in my town. When I got locked up, you know, it was more everyone trying to come into their own, eh? You know, everybody was trying to come into their own and set a foundation and plant flags all over the place and represent where they were from. It was more about getting sweaters. You remember back in the days, man, getting them jackets with your last name on the back, your hood, hats with your barrio, and letting everyone know and represent. That's the way we were representing. You know, if there was some play though, there was some confliction there, if there was some conflict, tell me, yeah, of course, we were going to fucking break bread like Jesus said and handle our business. But for the most part, there was none of that until I got incarcerated. Then about the mid-90s, something changed, eh? Something was in the Awa. Whatever it was, Vato started to shoot at each other. Pensa la tira. Um, but they'd been doing this shit down south. They weren't new to this. This was a game that they were playing quite well. You know, they already fucking conquered uh, 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 my, uh, Park Place and Boardwalk. We were over there still on Baltic Ave trying to get it. These Vatos already had Park Place. Um... I can't take nothing away from them from being the initiators or the forefathers of the gang lifestyle, the gang culture, because that's exactly what it was down south, man. And we kind of picked up where they left off, but they never left off. We just kind of picked up and did our thing. Two whole different sides of the coin, yet a lot of the same ways of thinking. You know, and that's what it taught me. So I would sit down, man, and I would listen to these stories. And I would listen from a distance because a lot of authors weren't trying to talk to me. 
They were laced up a certain way. They had prison mentalities already in the youth authority, the Sureños. Very militant group, man. One of the most dangerous groups I've ever been around. And it taught me that too. It taught me that these guys, although they have different reglas, they have different rules and regulations to themselves, um, they were still brown, you know? And that was what was number one to them, was representing for a brown man, or representing as a brown man in a righteous fashion. That's what the Sul taught me. It taught me that there's a lot of barrios, man. They got a lot of history, you know? we I call them barrios, but they're barrios, you know, with the B. Um, a lot of historia, you know, whereas my neighborhood started in the eight, late 80s, 88, 89, you know, that's when we, we were pretty new, we're young, we're still new to the game, you know, 30, 40 years deep later, um, that's just what it is. But these guys were from the 20s and 30s. A lot of these barrios like White Fence and 18th Street, Glanton. Um, you know, you had so many older hoods, all the Maravillas, that have been around since pre. They were predating Norteño and Sureño conflict. They were predating the Sul. They were predating everything, man. They were just Chicanos from barrios. And I, lo I love that, man. I love that aspect of the game because that's what I truly was in it for, man, was representing my people, uh, making sure that we were, you know, I mean, safe, secure, and doing our thing somewhere along the line. I just happened to be born into an era of fucking craziness, of confusion. Um, anyone that comes from the 90s, gangbanging, they will tell you that, man. It was an era of confusion. Everybody was the enemy. Get off where you're mad at on everybody because everybody was trying to be that one. You know, the Sul taught me a lot about canalismo because, you know, when I first got down south, I automatically assumed these vatos were all against me, and there was. There was Valtas that were waiting on us. But most of these Valtas that were waiting on us knew of us. Valtas from the 805 area like Bakersfield and, and Santa Maria and Santa Ruta and Valtas from Oxnard and Ventura. These were the Valtas that knew about Norteños, had had some type of frontline soldiering against the Norteños. So they automatically had a twist. They automatically had a chip on their shoulder. They wanted to get us off the linea. You know, they were trying to eradicate us. That was the one Ramflan. I've said it before in many spills, man that posed a threat. They were dangerous. They were dangerous because they were deep and they had numbers, but they were dangerous because they took the initiative to make that move. You know, anyone who sits here and says, oh, these Valtos ain't about it because they're from further up north, Charlie Holmes, that's Southern California all the way, and them Valtos were representing to the fullest, man. They were the one threat that I would say was the most dangerous while I was incarcerated in the Youth Authority. Prison was a whole different story. We'll get to that. But, um, you know, sitting there listening to these stories and and listening to the way that these guys lived and carried themselves, you know, talk about mothers on welfare. We're talking about poverty homes. We're talking about waters. We're talking about shootings, ghetto birds. You know, I grew up the same way. So I was like, wow, we're going to sit here and fight to the death homes and remove each other off said yards. When at the same time, we're going through a lot of the same struggles on the streets. You know, a lot of our jefitas, you know, were in them lines, getting them cajas full of chicken and pork, right? A lot of the things that they did or went through, I also went through. The Sul taught me about uniting as a people. These people came together down south against oppression. There was a lot of oppression going on down south. There was a lot of black and brown conflict. A lot of the woods were getting in the mix, right? There was a lot going on, but when you seen them in the youth authority or in prison, you understood, Holmes, what coming together truly was, just like the Norteño movement. Coming together is a real life thing. I've always said it, fill it up with unleaded, that if you come together as a people, man, you can't be stopped. It's harder to stop many than just one. With one man with an idea is a strong man. And there's a lot going on there. But if someone's able to utilize that against him and is, is able to get in where he fits in, they could shut that down. But when there's many minds thinking as one coming together, homes, that's a hard thing to swallow away. That's a hard pill to swallow away. You just can't stop that. Um, Sureños, traditionally to me, were the elite. Okay? Just being real. Norteños as well. We're going to get to that right now in a second. But the Sureños were the ones setting the bar high. You know, I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat and add preservatives and bullshit my own hand, my own people from up north. Because that's what I was, man. I'll always have love and I'll always see them as gaining total victory in whatever they're trying to do. But I'm just keeping it real, man, when I say that the Sureños have set the bar high, homes. These Valtos were dangerous. These Valtos were of sound mind. They were together. They were the ones that every time we looked at, we're like, damn, homes, there's so many of these vatos from so many different barrios. You know what I mean? We didn't know who was what, what was who to pick from first, to get off on first. We knew we had to get off on everyone, homes, but there were certain elements of certain groups that really didn't give a fuck about what we were going through or trip on us. And we try to decipher and 
and, and stray away from them. You got to understand, there was a lot that tripped me out. When I went into the Youth Authority, I assumed every Southsider, every Surrender, every Vothel from past Bakersfield homes, the funk was on. He didn't like me and I didn't like him because that's what I was told. That's what I was indoctrinated with. You know, you need to understand that up north it's different, homes. We're indoctrinated a different way. But it doesn't mean it's better or worse. It just means it's different, homes. I'm different. Yeah, I'm different. Like two chains, right? I was way different. Um, but they weren't. Half these Vothels, we were space aliens to them. Come on, ice cream. They didn't even know what we were. You know, and I've seen so many different surrenders. Blue on blue is what we call it, right? But I've seen so many South Sider surrenders go against each other. I mean, I remember at first I was shocked. Then I was like, kill them, get them, get them, go Lennox, water Lennox. I was pro Lennox that day, right? The next day, 12th Street Sharkies. The next day, orale white fans, right? Get your noji face, the real white fans, right? Orale, right? Get yours. Um, I started cheering on certain elements and, and gangs, surrenders. Oh, man, I was a big fucking fan of fucking Maravilla and 18th Street, right? Because these vaultals will handle their business. It seemed like everywhere they went, they had enemies. Um, and I would see it. I would see it, you know, be on a compa and the fucking door would open. Every time that compa door opened, that's the building, right? For those of you that don't know, the, the Spanglish, right? But as soon as that door opened, that puerta, boom, it opened. Let me tell you, homes, funk, it was getting funky. It's going to be short, but funky. Short because they're going to make the shit out of them. Funky because in that amount of time, vaultals are going to get plaqueated. Somebody was going to get beat up. I mean, every time Vatos were running, playboys, that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get off. Florencia. And I started to, and I think that's when I first started as Gunners Collective. That's what tripped everyone out. How can a Vato from up north know so, so much about certain barrios or know even the names of these gangs down south in Southern California, having not been from there? When you live there for almost three years on Whittier Boulevard in Fred Sinellis, you see Vatos from every gang, every hood, and you see the way they act. Because there were differences. There were slight differences. And the way different Vatos were a little bit more militant or a little bit more with the business compared to other Vatos that were little or gangs that just weren't. Then there were some little gangs that were just with that shit. There was Vatos from South Los that were really with that shit, right? You know what I mean? It's just how it was. Um, but what the Sul taught me is about being a man. You know, that's something I can never take away from them Vatos, you know? I, I hold a high respect. I know a lot of people like to say, oh, you got, you're on their jock or... Or, or you got, no, I respect them, homes. There's a difference between being on someone's jiggity jizak, like people are on mines, or just respecting someone for what they brought on the table, for what they put down. You know, um, as a gang member that I was for many years, the level of respect that I had for the adversary was through the roof. I sometimes had more respect for them than some of the Vatos that were rolling with me because I knew what they were about. I knew, uh, you know, hey, hey, fuck, hey, the Vatos are deep, hey. You know, I knew all that. Compared to these vatas over here, they're like, name fuck you at the game. Right? And I'm not going to say that there wasn't poop butts or suckers in every different group on each side because there is. There continues to be. But there was a lot of vatos that I held in high regards. Um, it taught me about being a man. When I was there, I was young. I was just coming into my own, eh? Right? 12, 13, 14 years old. This is about the time that a, a, a young kid starts to develop the skills as a man. You start to understand what you're going to do, where you're going, what it's, what it's going to be like. And so I started to grip that and grasp that. And everything I seen in front of me was food. Everything I seen was Southsiders. So I started to gravitate towards that element of discussion towards that, you know, that, that game that they were running in Southern California. And I ran with that, you know, being from up north, I seen, you know, I could utilize this um, to fulfill what I was trying to do as a man to become a man. Um, so when I got out, you know, a lot of the homies would trip off me. Damn, homies, you acting like a Southsider. Well, what does a Southsider act like, bro? You know, you tell me. Because what I'm acting is brown, homes. I'm acting brown and I'm proud of being brown. If you ain't proud of being brown, homie, get on the road. That's it. Get on down it. Come on, spider. Let's get down. Right? And that's just how I felt. You know, maybe my ways of thinking were a little off. Maybe, you know, I wasn't showing as much love to my own people as I should. But I was just going with what I know. I couldn't act like I didn't know. I couldn't act like something I wasn't. Or I couldn't act like like something I didn't. You know, this is all I knew, eh? Pensa la tira. Con permiso. You know, I was never into color banging. I was never into that. More than like, I should have been a doctor. Motherfucker, I should have just not been a gang member at all because I didn't really like it. I didn't like hurting my own head, my own people. Um, but I knew that hard decisions had to be made. And in order to achieve victory, you know, you have to do something, you know. To kill is a cruel necessity. But if one does not kill, how can one conquer? And if one does not conquer, what future is there for our people? And I lived by that philosophy. I continue to live by that philosophy. The philosophy being, I don't want to hurt your ass. I don't want to do nothing to you, man. I don't want you to do nothing to me. But if I have to, I have to, you. You know what I'm saying? It's just what it is, man. Menudo. Bang, bang.
antennas. You know what it is. Um, but the school taught me a lot. It taught me that this group that were my adversaries, man, didn't, they weren't to be fucked with, man. You know, as I grew up and I got older and I was in prison and I would be on this side of the yard and the Sorenos would be on that side of the yard, I would see them function. I would see from a distance the way they did it without going into the politics of prison and, and all that. I would just see them on the other side, the way they carry themselves, creased up, pieced up. Um, and I knew they were ready. You know, you hear a lot of stories about Norteño stay ready so they don't have to get ready. And that's facts, man. We was in there busting down daily, homes. We were sucked up, skinny, chopped up, though, with a lot of stamina. Um, you know, calisthenics were a given. Um, and it was that mentality, man. Always ready for guerra because it could always pop off at any time. That was a Norteño struggle, man. Educate your mind. Work out, you know, the physical, the mental, you know. Show canalismo to the homeboys. Righteousness. Um, you know, educate oneself. That's it. If you could do all that, homes, and you could do that real and, and everything falls in place, um, you could be that soldado, homes. You can get out with a little bit of respect, not only from others, but for yourself. And that's what really matters, homes. Do you respect yourself truly or do you care about what other people think about you? Because I'm here to tell you, I don't give a fuck less what they think about me. I respect myself as a man. I made the choices necessary to take care of my familia, take care of myself, eh? Bensa, that's embracement. That's real. Raza. I used to see the Southsiders on the other side, homes, and I gained a, another level of respect for them because I seen them do pegadas. I seen them do removals or, or, or get off, man. And these dudes were dangerous. You know, and everybody would tell you, all the way from the CEO to a fucking real righteous Norteño would tell you, hey, they're not to be fucked with, homes. Not only do they have the numbers, but they also pose that threat. You know, if you see them, they handle it professionally. They conduct their business. Now, on the other side of the corner, the Norteños do the same thing. And what that taught me was they staying ready because an adversary that was really about that shit you have to stay ready, to, you know what I mean? For them guys. You know, if not, Matas would have been all one guy, like just chilling, like ping, da, bang. big parlay over there with the Africanos on the side of the yard doing dips. It'd have been cool, but it wasn't that way. Um, the Sul taught me a lot about myself. It taught me that, you know, although, you know, traditionally I thought that these guys were against me, not all of them were, man. Um, so many times I've told stories and people call bullshit, call it what you want, um, about Surrenos back in my play in several different occasions. And I'll never take that away. Of course, the majority of my stories are going to be about me and Norteños rocking and homeboys fucking riding with me because that's what was going on at that time. That's the group I was from. But there were plenty of times of South. I probably have more times of Southsiders rocking with me than against me. Go figure. Just true. The school taught me a lot about myself as a man. Um, they taught me that although I was raised in Northern California, born and bred, you know, um, I still get love. You know, when I go down south, you know, I still get love. At the end of the day, you know, I ended up uh, being with the Surenya. You know what I mean? That That's uh, my girl. I just a lot of things, man. Um, not trying to jock or, or give motherfuckers too much, but I'm saying, you know, there's a lot as a Norteño that I was, you know, that these guys taught me. I can't take nothing from them. I can only thank them and uh, respect it, you know. But I remember, like I said, when I first started YouTube, you know, a lot of people tripped because I knew so much. But um, I gained the education from the real deal, from being doing time and sitting down and being right there amongst real ones. You know, not to take nothing away from the upstaters from up north. They're doing their thing. They have their own movement. I respect it as well. You know, I've seen it established. Uh, I met a lot of the Vatos that did establish some of the shit. And, you know, they're, they're about that business. But everything homes comes from down south. You know, all that swag, all that education, everything that they're doing up north, these upstaters, comes from Avalto, you know, down south. That's why they wear LA hats and, and they represent that because they show love and pay homage back to those that started this shit. You know, all I could say, man, is as a former Norteño, an ex-Norteño man, um, a real one to sit down and disrespect another group just because that's what you're being told to do or you think that's what it is. Um, nah, homie. You know, them Vatos, man, are doing them. And for the most part, 99.9% of, of the Surenos that are down south, the real ones, don't even know what a Norteño is. Facts, you know, until they're incarcerated. They're not going to see them because we're not down there like that. That's just what it is. Anyways, with that being said, that's what the school taught me, man. They taught me about being a man, about respecting everyone. And the North, they taught me so much more. But at the end of the day, man, I respect all Raza for the teachings and the education that they instilled within me. That's gun and that's gang. Knowledge you can't get in college. With that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, at the end of the day, man, you know, you may think one way, then you get a little bit older, colder from having the weight of the world on your shoulder, then you start to think another way. And you realize, homes, we're brown. It's, it's time to stick together. 
You know what I'm saying? Thumbs up and thumbs down. See, heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown like some E-40 shit. And I'm going to continue to wear mines and do what I does. There's other crowns out there. Get yours, eh? Get your crown. You know, I heard her pussy went platinum. Do your thing, homes. I like yellow gold. You know what it is, the gun. Bang, bang.